Oh, I gotta give a small hello. I hope he's still lurking around to our good friend Fenner. I see his creepy little new emote, that wave. What's up, buddy? I see you in chat. Hello. Hi. Uh, but, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. It's the BobbleCon Valima League for the Alima League. That just sounds weird if you don't know the context. <laughs> Spun here on the leftmost side of the map. We, of course, have down at the moment in this best of three, the Invasion Esports Red Terran player, Gumiho. In the top right, as the blue Protoss, it's Liquid Hero. Alright, just gotta cross our fingers and uh, get that prize pool up so we can attract the real hero. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, just making some jokes because, of course, people in chat are going on about it. But I'm actually really glad to see Liquid Hero. I think one of the big things about him is he... For all the publicity the Team Liquid guys get, I feel the Europeans get uh, so much more. Like, there's no talk about Liquid Hero, which is kind of sad. Uh, we're always hearing about Snood and Mana and, you know, pretty much everyone but Hero. But Hero's not a bad player, and I think he gets written off way too easily. So I'm really glad that he gets chances to prove himself. Uh, at least, because I enjoy watching him play. Well, it's just that he hasn't been playing in very many tournaments. Uh... I don't know if he's getting knocked out early in IAM brackets, like qualifiers. I can't, actually can't remember from what we cast, but you know, either that or he's just literally not playing. <laughs> he's cheesing again, by the way. Um, <coughs> he's just not playing, so everyone's like, you know, what is Hero doing? And it, you know, the only glimpse we see is in the Alima League. Yo, I think this one's gonna be for Dark Templar. Yeah, almost 100%. You'd want to scout where they are before you put a Stargate there. Well, that and like the Stargate away. would blindly go here anyways, because it would be the same distance from top to bottom, right? Yeah, that too. Like, there's no reason to just put one blindly there. <laughs> Watch, he'll, he'll, he'll like completely do something stupid. Like, nope, just kidding, it's proxy blank. Like, why? <laughs> it's not PvP. <laughs> uh, but okay, so if, if it is, let's assume for a moment it's going to be Dark Templar, this Reaper becomes so very important. Scouting yeah. is going to be everything for this, because of course one of the big things is going to their opponent's main base and if he gets there quick enough with the Reaper, he's going to see, hey, wait a minute, you're missing a pylon. And it's basic scouting 101. Protoss need the pylon by now. Uh, their second pylon, pardon me. So if you are a Terran player, right, you're trying to figure this game out. Oh, he's actually going to go a little bit heavier than just scouting. Uh, and you see no second pylon. Oh man, you've got to either go ham or get really defensive. Yeah. Really nice that oh, Gumiho. Oh, oh my oh, god! Hero, what a god! Gumiho <laughs> type in the equivalent of like, God, for God, for God, this is like, that's what I imagine this is the Korean, like, of right it there. Is. Like, that wasn't, that wasn't like a perfect um, type, anyways. But, okay, so that that's pretty important usually versus a regular old T Rex or a regular old macro game. Like, you can't just, like, it's about the snowball effect. But because he's already so scarce on units going for a very, very fast Dark Shrine. I don't know if it's really that bad. Like, this... four Reapers is still going to be a lot to deal with. Right, but because this is no Mothership Core, there's no defensive Stalker. The one Stalker's going across the map. I think a... I think Hero's going to okay. get out cheese here. This T-Rex Reaper build is kind of sick. I like it. It's just, it's going to do so well against this cheese. But, okay, yeah, and in fact, Gumiho realizes what's going on. Uh, the Oracle hasn't hit yet, and oh. even if it had the, uh, the oh. Amos Service will be necessary. I don't know what these Reapers are coded in, but they slip through those probes when they absolutely should not have. Stalker comes back home, but two more Reapers are joining in, and four Reapers can take out a Stalker. Yes. Uh, somewhat no problem. Some other ship quite is really going to train this round, but still, he's already lost so many probes. Ten probes dead. When that Dark Strength completes, he'll barely be able to make one Dark Templar. His gas intake was really hurt the most through this pull. Yeah. Oh, no, oh the indecisiveness. He could have got the Stalker if he was hesitant there. He did a surprisingly good job defending that. Uh, the four Reapers could have just ducked out and come back in. It is Catalina, and the Stalker Militia Corps can't cover all of their base, literally. Um, but instead, loses all of those Reapers, is transitioning. He did get a Missile Turret, preparing for yeah. maybe the Proxy Oracle, and also it's going to help out somewhat against the potential of a Dark Shrine, which he's got to know it's a Dark Shrine by now, right? Because an Oracle that yeah, fast full, would have already hit. Full wall off here as well, and he's going to be able to... I imagine he'll probably save a scan. We're seeing him float above 50 energy right now, and hopefully he doesn't go into autopilot mode, because he does not have detection at the front of his base. But that DT's going to cancel the command center. Oh, Maybe it's going to be not. so close. Oh, no, Reapers no, he's not going to go for it. Rippers, no. Rippers, Rippers, Rippers. Oh, if he had known he wasn't going to get up into the main, he could have gotten that command center. Yeah. Well, uh, if he wasn't aware about this, he certainly is now, and hopefully he doesn't wait too long to scan. I don't know if DPS to take it down. This is still really annoying. <laughs> yeah, that stalker from earlier is actually, uh, if that had died 
this would be very, very different for the defense. But once the orbital finishes up, he should be able to fly this out and keep it alive. A couple more DTs are coming to the front lines, and these are just gonna tear through that supply team. Wow! Oh, the missile turret's so close. Okay, Alright. Looks like he should be okay to defend. Uh, what is this? I love saving esports one pancake at a time. Bobble convolute. Ah, oh, damn it. Uh, it's from Kitty in the Neck. It's a $5 donation. It says, is Kate for life. Oh my god. Oh, you better lift that CC. Like, okay. is this just the sickest bait? Is that why he's leaving it on the ground? Like, what the hell? I know. It just seems so unnecessary. <laughs> uh, okay, well, he gets on top of this once more. Another scan burn, but he's not focusing oh, on the DT with it. Save what a waste of a scan almost. Nice. All right, he cleans this up and he holds. And the thing is, he holds against DTs without losing too much for it. So, really, Gumiho in a nice spot this game. It's a complete role reversal of last game. Uh, the defense much, much better. You know, <laughs> he's not going to do it. But I think it would be funny if Hero just took the base where all his proxies are. So when Gumio <laughs> scans the natural, he's just he's still freaking out. It's like, one base? One base? What? <laughs> like, one base? Three gate? What's going to happen? Well, I guess, uh, you know, I don't know if Gumio would really scan the natural. She's just burned so many scans uh, already. He may just uh, that's true. focus on muling. I was just going to get about last game because he was pretty liberal about it. But I miss casting Yoda. I need to get on Yoda's ass to complain the Lima League sometime. Busy helping his team. Holy, did you? All right, ties up the series one-one. Gumiho, not gonna go down.